Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Now this review of 90 Day Fiance Season 8 Episode 2 is a whole week late. It's a new episode that come on today that I will have to y'all tomorrow. But again, this is Episode 2 of this season. I told y'all I would do it. I'm going to do it and whatnot. Okay? But first things first, if you have not done so already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to become a whole J Bird, J Bird, dun 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 dun, and all that goodness and stuff and whatnot. Okay, do not forget to also like this video, comment in the comment section, hit the share button to share it on your social media. You can also follow me on IG and Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore Corner. The link for all of that is in the description box below. Okay, do not forget to also breathe it on now to inhale and to exhale okay to relax to relate to release and send to yourself and everyone around you now do what get into this review immediately people so okay. first up we have brandon okay we know brandon is the way no julia to get the whatever i'm looking like why is his mama so excited oh my god she's i'm looking like she not your fiance, mama. Calm the hell down or whatever. So, Julia does get there. Now, the family is all connecting and whatnot. But we do see Julia and Brandon make out what seem like forever. Now, Julia also is very, very happy to be there and brings up how she feels like Brandon is perfect. But I'm like, she's from Russia. What does she know? Does she know if he's perfect? You don't know how perfect he is. And you are here with him for a while or whatever. Now, his mom, like, now all four of us can go out instead of just the three of us. I'm like, mama, now y'all can go out separately. Okay? He don't have to tag along with y'all. Y'all should not want to tag along with them. Okay? But the production does add Brandon in front of his mama and Julia. So, who's the most important woman in your life? He was like, what? Huh? Yeah, me speaking no English, I don't speak the, I'm, I, I don't know, I don't know how to answer it or whatever. I'm like, first of all, that means you not ready to get married yet. Because of your uh, response to that isn't, you know, your fiancé or uh, whatever. Your mother and your fiancé, future wife, are really two separate people. Like, your wife should be the most important person in your life. That is not a diss to your mom. Because your mom is still forever and will ever be your mother. But I'm like, the fact that he couldn't say it is bullshit to me. Your mama already has your daddy who should say that she is the most important woman in his life. Not because his mom probably dead, but because that's his wife. They always say when you get married, your spouse should be the most important person. Especially when your kids is older. It's not a diss to them or whatnot, but I mean, come on now. Leave it be. Now, they then get to the hotel. But the mom like, okay, we have to hurry up and go to dinner. You know, you can't be in there too long. She don't want them fucking. Okay? Mama being a whole cock blocker. And um, Brandon brings up, mom has always been a cock blocker or whatever. Now, they have not saw each other in about four months. They want to have sex. It's really that simple or whatever. So, they took 30 minutes to come down for dinner. I would have took an hour. That's just me. And they get in. Oh, so what happened? Took you so long. That was fucking mama leave him alone or whatnot. Okay. So at dinner, the mama brings up how, you know, I, I just hope that you know, you know, that, um, you know, you're going to have your own room. And then he's going to have his own room. You know what I'm saying? You know, our house, our rooms. And she was like, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean? Well, like, you will sleep somewhere else than him. He's like. I was going to tell her later because he hadn't had a chance to tell her that yet. His daddy then say, yep, it's his fault. He wasn't being honest. Shame on you, son. I'm like, but y'all knew he hadn't told her yet. I'm like, his parents ain't shit. I mean, his parents are great because I feel as if they're financially helping him a whole bunch. But why y'all trying to sabotage things already? Because y'all already see the girl get an attitude quick about stuff. Stop fucking with that girl. Let her be and whatnot. Okay, anyway, so, you know, they lead that be or whatever. Because the parents, like, you know, as long as y'all not married, we don't want y'all sleeping together. Oh, well, we can go get married tomorrow. Okay, Julia, like, I'm here 
We can go get married tomorrow. And then y'all won't have any issue with us sleeping in the same bed. She like, I want to be around my man or whatever. I want to be around him. The mom man brings up, will you be taking steps to make sure y'all don't have kids? And she was like, what the fuck? What? What? And she's like, look. That stuff for y'all to talk about with Brandon, like, I'm not comfortable having this conversation with y'all. Like, I would not even have this talk with my own parent. Like, I don't want to take any medications. Leave me be. Like, this is not a good... The mama and the daddy is for sure overstepping having these conversations with her. Now, if the parents are going to be fully financially responsible for her, I get them wanting, wanting to not add a whole extra mouth. But I'm like, if he is working and supporting them too, they just live there, y'all have no control over her cooch. Leave her be or whatever. And the mom, like, you know, you can go see my doctor to talk about your options. Now, Brandon kind of just sat there and didn't say shit, even though he feels as if I'm upset that we're even having this conversation. Julia's pissed too. So, when Julia and Brandon go to the room or whatever, she pissed. Why would we not sleep in the same bed? Like, we have to bond and be together. Like, if you're going to be at work all day and we're not together, you know, during the day and then you get home and we have to be in separate rooms, like, when will we have time to, like, bond? And I'm looking like, marry him tomorrow or whatever. But he feel like, oh, it's like, you think it's, like, bonding time? I'm like... Yes, when else would she spend time with you? But I feel like if the parents don't want them sleeping in the same bed overnight, I'll just cuddle with her on the couch all the time, okay? But I'm going to leave that be too. But she wants him to talk to his parents because, again, you didn't tell me about any of this shit before I got here. Next up, we have Mike and Natalie. I still think she looks weird. We're going to leave that be. Anyway, we see Uncle Bo. Mike has asked Uncle Bo. To move out. Uncle Bo is going to go live with his brother. Okay. Uncle Bo was also actually Mike's cousin. But because he's older. He treats him like his uncle or whatever. And I'm going to say this. Mike ain't shit. Okay. Mike is a lot of things. But Mike ain't shit. For asking Uncle Bo to move out the home he's lived in. For however long. For Natalie's crazy ass. I'm like what the fuck. The last time you saw her my brother. She told you. She could not tell you that she loved you. And you got Uncle Bo moving out. I felt so bad. Because Uncle Bo was sad. Even though Uncle Bo was 50. And should have his own. If you have been letting that man stay there. And, and that's his home. Making him leave, saying we have to have him leave just until Natalie can feel comfortable. I'm like, the fuck? Okay, the fuck? I'm going to leave it be. Anyway, Uncle Bo, like, I just don't want Mike to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? I want him to be happy, but I, I just hope he don't get hurt and all of this. Natalie is crazy. He will get hurt soon, but I'm going to let that be. Now, we do see Natalie at home over there and wherever she's from. She in, in her country. Well, her mama and she packing. I don't care, okay? Her mama feel like they'll be a good couple saying that in the beginning of most relationships, there's always difficulties. Those are the ones you leave alone. Like, I don't want it to be hard from the beginning. I don't want to have to keep fussing and fighting and, and, and to prove my love for somebody. That's not, mm. if it's like that, I don't want it or whatever. I don't mind it being like little things here and there, but we should not be fussing and cussing all the time in the beginning and whatnot. So... We do see that she gets to America or whatever. Now she's here. And I'm like, do we care? No, we don't. Or whatever. So she's there. Okay, Uncle Bo was gone. Let's remove Uncle Bo. You see the move down because my thing shit. Anyway, so they at the airport acting all lovey-dovey. She done ran up to him and jumped in his arms. They hugging and kissing or whatever. I'm like... Y'all don't even really like or know each other, but I'm going to let it be because they now have 90 days to try to be a real couple and get married. But I feel like each of them is waiting for the other one to do something to piss them off, and they're just waiting for the shoe to drop. But I'm like, that's why I don't care. So he has also gotten a room for them to stay the night. There in Seattle. He brings up how he's paid down some of his debt. Okay. He has some more money saved too. So he wanted her or them to have a good first day. Okay. Good first night. So they're going to stay in Seattle. Do some sightseeing or whatever. And he got a room that costs 400 bucks a night. Okay. He like I wanted to have a whole fresh start. A whole fresh start means leave her. Okay. You need a fresh start from her. 
I don't like her because she made Uncle Bo leave. And his punk ass agreed with it. Oh, heifer. Then we have Rebecca and Ziet. Okay. Now, Rebecca meet with her friend. You know what I'm saying? Who feels as if the last man you married, you know what I'm saying, married you just to get a green card. Like, why are you marrying a whole other man? Or being with all of the men. Would it could possibly be the same way. Now the friend is the same lady who she worked at a PI firm with a private investigator. And the lady had looked up Ziad. Okay. She came to find out that he didn't have any kind of job history. Meaning he don't make no money. But Ziad told Rebecca. Well no. What well, item I want for sale. An item I have on my Macy's list is on sale. I'm going to look at that. Anyway. But again, uh, she brings up how Zed told her, well, no, you know what I'm saying? The thing is, I begin paying in cash under the table. So that's why there's no record of me having a job. I was like, hmm, sounds suspect to me, but I'm going to leave that be. But the last man messed her up some crucial financially or whatever. He messed up her money, her credit, and all of that. He did all that and then left her ass. And she's like, she's just now... Rebuilding her life, she wants to be sure that you know, yeah, don't try to do that because she loves him and hopes it's better and whatever. I'm like, so that's why she can't, you know, move because her credit messed up. She had to move with her daughter anyway. But the friend, like, I just need you to look out for red, for red flags. Rebecca feel like the last dude she married him in his country, then brought him over here. She did not do the whole 90 day thing, so she didn't, you know, have as much time. To figure out who he was, but that was dumb. But she feels as if because with Ziet is going to come here, they're going to wait 90 days before getting married that she can see if he owns some bullshit or whatever. So she brings up um, how. Well, no, she was at the game stop. Okay, and I'm like, first of all, she's having money for trouble because she lived with the daughter. Why are you at game stop? And she's at game stop to buy a fucking game. For Ziad because he likes playing games and the little cashier, store clerk, or person, whatever. She's like, yeah, like my son likes playing these other kind of games, whatever. But I'm here to get a game for like my boyfriend. And she's like, oh, but I, how old is your boyfriend? Oh, my boyfriend's 28 and my son's 25. The fact that you're marrying someone who is your son's age. Okay, that's on you. Leave it be. But I'm like, you in the games? You are a grown ass. 49 year old woman in GameStop buying a game for your dude, girl, cougar. She's a, she's a broke sugar mama because she don't have that much money. You don't have money to afford to be buying that boy games. Okay, don't do that. But she bought it anyway or whatever. And I mind you look like a little sugar mama in that store getting your sugar baby his game. I'm like, and she had a credit card that has yes face on it. Looking like that is the weirdest shit ever. Like, that ain't even his money. Like, why is his why is his face on a card that he had nothing to do with putting any money on? I'm like, that's just stupid or whatever. So we then see it's like 4 a.m. You know, our time or whatever, and you know where he is. Someone pointed out that he was from. I think I maybe said Tanzania. I don't know. He's from where he's from. Wherever he's from. Um, it's like morning time there, and this is the day he has the appointment for the visa or whatever so again she's like waiting for him to call he calls her again it's daytime there and she's like what happened did you get a response did you get an answer he's like well no the, you know the, the interview's done or whatever but they did not tell me if i was approved or not like his paperwork has been approved but the visa part of it has not been approved just yet so they made him leave his passport with them and he has to come back in a week and he was not told any other information and would not i wish they would have told you today i'm like but do we care I mean, we do. I wonder what's going to happen. Anyway, we'll move on from them. Then we have Jovi and Yara. Um, I'm not going. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, you know, she is walking in, you know, from the airport or whatever. And when they get got back to his house, well, their house or whatever, their apartment, she's like, you know, I never saw so many fat people like I did on my flight from Detroit to New Orleans. I'm looking like, bitch. Oh, hell for, I'm going to leave that be all oh, hating asshole. Anyway, we're going to leave that be. We ain't, we ain't talk about your face show stuff. Anyway, so they get to the apartment or whatever. It's messy. It's small. Like, this is, this is for two people? 
oh, this would be like for one person. It looked like where he was one person. And the place was not small. I might, like, girl, pay for something bigger than if that's the case. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? He wants them to go out, have some fun, be on board, all in this party, party, party. She's like, no, I'm tired. I'm, I want to go to sleep. I've been on the plane for 30 hours. I want to go to bed. But at least she wanted to go to bed with him. You know what I'm saying? We have had other people who, I'm, I'm tired, okay? But you should stay away from me with your penis. Leave me be. But she wanted him to come with her to bed or whatever. The following day, he brings up how she has not stopped complaining since the moment she got here. This is too small. This is this. The, the room is small. The, all these things. Uh, shit she ain't paid for, whatever. He like, you know, living with her and being with her is definitely different than when we were vacationing together. Because vacation is fun. This shit ain't fun or whatever. So he takes her down to Bourbon Street. Because again, I want to have fun on Bourbon Street. And she's like, it smells like piss and throw up. It is disgusting. This is not going to work out between them two. It's just not. It's not. I'm like, she's only been there for a day. She's already getting on my goddamn nerves. So they're walking and talking or whatever. He brings up how, you know, he wants to take her to meet his mom. Who's going to also have family there or whatever. So she can meet, you know, his family. Everything because again, he's leaving in two weeks and they're gonna get it married, so he wants her to get more comfortable around his family. But because he wants to like go to his mom's house, stay the night, and then come back to their place the next day, I think mom must you know, sometime in Louisiana, the people live like far enough away to where you don't drive and come back, you drive there, stay the night, and come back the following day or whatever. And she's like, I don't want to stay in someone else's house. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to sleep, I don't want to sleep in your mom's house. I feel like she can't tell me that she's never stayed in the Airbnb. If you can pay to stay in someone else's house, as a, she looks like an Airbnb uh, person. Anyway, but again, to, the way she was talking, like, I'm not going to know, you know what I'm saying? You can go yourself, but I'm, no, well, if we can't go and come back, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, no. And it was just rude. It was rude as if his mama's house was less than her or not worthy of her to spend the night or whatever. Um, it was just dumb. And so he like, well, you can, you know, well, no, we're going to go. <laughs> you know, we're gonna go. Well, I can go back to my country. I, I can leave. He like, well, if you want to go back, that's fine. We, but if we go to my mom's house, like, we're going to um, spend the night. He's shocked that she's acting this way. I'm not. She's obnoxious. And lastly, we have a new couple that is back. So they're not new. Tariq and Hazel. Okay, Tariq, as we see, is 46. Hazel is 28. Um, They were on before the 90 days when he went to be with her in the Philippines. So, first of all, why is he rapping? Why is he put on the gold chain? Like, he was too old to be a new rapper. Leave it be, bruh. Leave it be. If that ain't your full-time job to pay the bills, just stop. Just stop. Okay, anyway, he brings up how he loved to travel. He fell in love with, with Thailand or whatever. He loved dating Asian women. His exes are all Asian or whatever. And now his future wife, his future ex-wife, uh, Hazel, who we met online while looking for who? For some Asians, okay? He said that she reminds him of an Asian Angelina Jolie. I mean, I see it, but at the same time, she's just Hazel. Anyway, so, um, again, they got engaged on Before the 90 Days, which was, I think, was it a year ago? It probably aired a year ago, whatever. So now they've been engaged for two years, okay? And he brings up how she recently was approved for the K-1 visa. So she will be here in a couple of weeks. So he also has a seven-year-old daughter who is on the spectrum of autism. Um, he brings up how she lives with him five days a week and then it's with the mom on weekends. But she's a very high-functioning per person. She's a girl. She's a very high-functioning um, kid who has autism, so that's a good thing too. So he brings up how you know Hazel, you know, would need to be great with his daughter, and that's the most important thing about her coming here was how she can help him, you know, take care of his child, like be a good stepmom or mother figure to the daughter. Um, now Hazel also has an eight-year-old son who lives in the Philippines, but the son lives with the daddy. So, when she come here, the son gonna stay there, but eventually they, eventually they plan to send for the son. Um, well, I guess that's a good thing, however. So, he brings up how after 
they got engaged. Hazel told him that she is actually bisexual. I'm like, what? Okay. And she brings, he brings up how she wants them to have a girlfriend. So she wants to be able to have cooch and penis. And I'm like, so is the other cooch going to also be a helpful person to the daughter? Like, where does the extra cooch come in? Like, is, it, is they only there for sex? Is the extra? I'm I'm confused because again, I, girl, I don't know. Anyway, so he do go meet with his friend, little, his little female friend or whatever, and he brings up how at one point Hazel was pregnant. Okay, she had took a she took three pregnancy tests. Okay, one came up positive, and the two came up negative. Because the two that came up negative were negative like a week or so later after the first positive test, he thought that she had an abortion. He was pissed off or whatever, and so they broke up. And then he was dating someone else or whatever. And I'm looking like, but how do you figure she had an abortion? I don't know, I'm going to leave that be. But again, and then, you know, he was dating this new person named, I think, Minnie. And he was like, you know, he had to go back and talk to Hazel for some reason. She then told him, you know, well, no, I did not have an abortion. The doctor told me the test that came up positive was wrong. I was never pregnant. Like, it was a false positive, whatever, which is why the, the following two came up negative. But he's dumb, and I'm like, whatever. So he then forgave her, but he had to then tell her that he had been dating a girl. You know what I'm saying? The girl, Missy. And so that's what she told him. Guess what? I'm bisexual, and I can like her too. So they were dating. They had a girlfriend. Boom, they're going Missy. I'm like, girl, <laughs> he found a bisexual woman in the Philippines who wants them to have a girlfriend. I'm like, I guess so. And for him to love, you know, Asian women or people of Asian descent to then be able to have two at once. I'm like, girl, it's just weird or whatever. But he brings up how because she was bisexual, they met up with the girl. It was a great two days or whatever. And so Hazel felt like Minnie liked him more than she liked her. I said because Minnie probably wasn't gay or bisexual, but she was just down for the cause or whatever. So Hazel then told him at that point, you know, you can never talk to her again. Okay, he, but he then said once COVID happened, okay, and it was in um, whatever country or town that Minnie was from, he reached out, checking on her because of COVID or whatever. Um, and so they start talking about that. So now he has to tell Hazel that he was talking to Many even after she asked him not to. I'm like, <sighs> threesomes in Philippines and just, it's, it's seemed too much. Tariq has a lot going on, but I'm going to leave that be too. Anyway, that was the whole episode. Um, I'm going to do the whole season. I am. Um, I, I'm going to start doing it every week. I won't be late. Um, after today but again I had to see if I wanted to watch the whole season and I do so y'all will get more reviews and leave that be anyway I'm going to bed peace